I would say to an Australian breeder, he's probably the standing for you. You know, he's going to get a very strong, robust, good-looking horse that like fast ground, that had loads of speed at two, three, and four. And I don't think you can ask for more than that from a stallion. Congratulations on training the co-world champion Myla. You've had some handy horses in your time, but he must be very special. He is, yeah, without doubt. You know, he's going to leave a massive gap here. Um, he's probably the best looking horse I think we've ever had through the yard and the lads in the yard used to refer to him affectionately of course as Superman. Um, you know, super looking horse and he really came up trumps for me and my dad. You know, he won a group one at Royal Ascot for me, um, which is the first race of the meeting on, on fast ground. He's an unbelievable horse and a gentleman to deal with as well. He's very special from day one, um, very talented horse. A lot of speed and I always thought he was going to stay well. As you say, he was a very good looking horse, but did he have a lot of size and scope as well? That's the one thing he always had. Yeah, he always had an awful lot of scope, a very good shoulder and he's very strong. Physically, he's about as good a looking horse as you will ever see. Um, and he was like that right through his life. You know, when he was winning his races as a two year old, he always had the scope to make a, to make an old, a, a good older horse, three year old and four year old. And um, yeah, he, all, all through his life, he had no, no problems in that department. Yeah, very strong athletic horse and a beautiful mover with it. So he was a very well balanced horse? Oh, extremely well balanced. Probably as good a mover as I've ever ridden. Would you say he retired sound? Oh yeah, he was sound as a pound. He ran in Santa Anita and it was like the road. I suppose the one thing that was fairly unique, for a high chaparral anyway, was the fact that he came to hand as an early two-year-old. Did that surprise you or was it quite clear from when you got him that that was always going to be the case. Well, I think the thing about him when he was a two-year-old, and this is what will stand him in good stead for, for being a stallion, is that he had so much speed. And when he ran in the Group 2, the Champagne Stakes, at the end of his two-year-old career, he made the running and basically never saw a horse the whole way. He did it, he did it hard, you know, the revs were high all throughout the race and still picked up at the end of the race. And for a horse like that to have that much raw ability, because he, he was a very big two-year-old, and to win his maiden first time like he did, and uh, to get himself organised in time. He did very, very well for a, for a big horse to win as many races as he did as a two-year-old. And it just shows that he was a well-balanced horse all, all his life. No, from day one, uh, the first piece of work I rode him, I just said, you can run him wherever you like, he'll win. Did you and Hughesy ever have to have problems discussing tactics or making plans for races because no. he was so versatile? We used to have problems um, keeping our mouths shut when it came to Toronado, because what he used to do at home was just unbelievable you know he was a wonder horse and we used to go to the races thinking sometimes how you know this cannot get beaten and you know he would work that impressively and look that impressive at home that you just thought you know he couldn't get beaten and once we did think that was i suppose in the queen island royal ascot and then when he beat dawn approach in the sussex and you know he, he disappointed us in the guineas because we expected so much but then we got him right and you know on, on his day he was near on unbeatable and what was the best way of riding it he was easy enough, he made the running, he was dropped in both ways. Um, after making the running in Doncaster in the Group 2, he was just set alight a little bit that day. So after that we said, if we want a bit of longevity here, we need to settle him in. And once we got him settled, he was good as gold. Did he have a good turn of foot? He did, yeah. But um, his asset was his ability, his big stride and gallop horses into the ground. Raw speed, something that's very good in Australia. Yes, loads of pace, loads of pace. Um, you always felt you were going the best in any race, even when he won the Sussex, they went very fast. And he was the only horse on the bridle throughout. Did you ever have any queries about, about ground with, with him, or was no. he just one of those? Tornado would go on any ground, particularly fast ground. You know, his best form was on very fast ground. He was a very sound horse. You know, he had great feet, and you know, he could handle soft ground, but he, all his best form was, was, was on fast ground. And you know, that's because he was... He was very sound. He's quite a heavy top horse, so he's, he, he was pretty good to handle um, fast ground. We always made sure we kept him off red soft ground. Normally most horses that move that well like top of the ground. Um, so the faster ground the better for him anyway. Do you believe that he could have won a top level race over shorter than a mile? Oh absolutely, yeah. You know, he won a group two over six fur, seven furlongs, sorry. At the end of his two-year-old career, I think he could have won group races over six furlongs, no problem. You know, he'd loads and loads of speed. You know, I sometimes thought, 
maybe that's what we should be doing. But he was doing so well at a mile, um, we carried on. But I'm absolutely no doubt he'd have had the speed to win group races over five or six fellows, no problem. Oh, without a doubt. Um, any good miler, I always thought, would win a July Cup in any year. And we've had horses that, that have gone and done it in this country. So, yeah, he, he'd have had a... His, his such a long stride, it made up for maybe that little bit of speed that you needed more for six furlongs. His times were excellent as well in all of his races, even when he didn't perhaps get his nose in front. Is that a sign that European milers at this day and age are really the cream of all crops? Well, I think the European milers, certainly the last few years, we've had a very strong hand in that division. And, you know, he has added to that the fact that he had so much speed during his races, you always knew he was going to run his race. And, you know, when Tornado did get beaten, he was beaten by champions. You know, he yeah. wasn't beaten by also runs. And uh, on his day, he, he was unbeatable. The Sussex and the Queen Anne are clearly Europe's elite top mile races. He smashed both of them and, and came up against a very good one last yeah. year in the Sussex. What does that say about his qualities going into a career as a stallion? Well, I think the nice thing is that he was a Group 1 winner over, you know, over a mile at three and four. He beat the Guineas winner um, when he won the Sussex as a three-year-old, and that was an unbelievable performance because he was a tough nut to crack. Um, and we'd had a few battles with him, and we knew we had the horse that was good enough to beat him, and it was great that he went and did that. Then he won the, the Queen Anne first time out as a four-year-old, and that's a big ask. To win a Group 1, your first race of the season, was you know, a very tough ass um, on the horse, and he came good, you know, he, and that was, a, again, a, another very good race with a lot of good horses in it, and, you know, he beat them fairly comfortably. What would you like to see in his progeny going forward? I'd like to see, in his progeny, I'd like to see them all come here. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I would love to train some of them, and he was yeah, such a gorgeous horse. I'd imagine he'll stamp his progeny... In a, in a way that you'll, you'll be able to say, that's a Tornado Colt or that's a Tornado Philly. You know, if they look 10% of the horse he was, they'll, you know, they'll be good looking horses. He, he really was one of the best looking racehorses and subsequently one of the best looking stallions you'll ever see. And hopefully, well, I have no doubt in my mind that he'll make a very good stallion and he'll stamp his stock just like him. And, you know, he's no reason why he shouldn't be as big a success at stud as he was on the track. A good temperament. He was a very kind horse, um, never done anything nasty. Um, and I would like to think they're athletic. And then the phone didn't stop ringing after he won his maiden from everybody. And I mean everybody. You know, they, everybody could see what a nice horse he was and the time of the race. And uh, he was going to be a star. Luckily, we were able to, to uh, keep the horse, or he was sold subsequently, but sold internally to remain in the yard. And that was our biggest worry, was that he was going to disappear. Well, luckily he didn't. And lo very luckily he didn't, yeah. And hopefully Sheikh Joanne will send you some, some Toronado. That would be great, future. yeah. I know Sheikh Joanne will be supporting him with a lot of his good mares. And uh, hopefully, if I can persuade him, he'll send some here. What qualities do you think he displayed in his racing which would have been good in Australia? Um, when he won in Ascot, it was his first run of the year, and he needed a lot of courage. There was a pacemaker in that race, and I felt that they went six furlong pace for the first six furlongs anyway. And then he had to grind it out when he wasn't 100% fit, and he showed he had courage that day as well. Do you think physically he has all the attributes to make a successful stallion? Oh yes, um, I have a painting at home of him because he's such a nice horse. Um, nice colour, good head, good eye, and a beautiful athlete to walk. And he's very correct physically then? Oh yes, he ticks all the boxes in the right places. He is a gorgeous horse, no matter, no matter any part of the world, he's a beautiful specimen. And what would you say to an Australian breeder about what they can expect from, a, from Toronado as a stallion, given that they look to breed a slightly different type of horse that we breed? I would say to an Australian breeder, he's probably the stallion for you. You know, he's going to get a very strong, robust, good-looking horse that like fast ground, that had loads of speed at two, three and four. And I don't think you can ask for more than that from a stallion.